Finally, we have to see the last settings icon. By clicking on it, four options will appear. The first option allows us to scan a QR code to associate the information in that code with the images we capture from that moment on. The second option is to enable Fluke Connect connectivity. If we click on this function, three new options will appear. The first one is, Save Images to Fluke Connect Cloud. This option requires three steps. The first one is to activate the Wi-Fi communication on the camera with the switch button on the right. The second step is to connect the camera to an existing Wi-Fi network. Obviously, if the network is protected, we must enter the network password. Once connected to the Wi-Fi network, the third step is to log into the Fluke Connect Cloud by entering your username, which is usually your email and the password you chose when you opened your account in Fluke Connect. After completing these three steps, each time you capture an image, in addition to saving it to the camera memory, it will be sent to your Fluke Connect account. The second option in the Fluke Connect menu is called Pair Hotspot to Fluke Connect. This option makes the camera generate its own Wi-Fi so we can connect the mobile phone to the camera's Wi-Fi, and every time we capture an image it will be uploaded to Fluke Cloud through the free Fluke Connect app installed on the mobile phone. To do this, we have to press the activation button icon of the Wi-Fi network again. In that way, the camera will activate its Wi-Fi network and a blue LED will light up on the right of the screen. To know the details of this Wi-Fi network, we can select the option Wi-Fi Hotspot Settings, in this way we can see the name of the Wi-Fi network and its password. Finally, to exit the menu, we press the Image Capture button. The third option within the Fluke Connect menu, called Save Images to Shared Folder, in theory, would allow saving the images in a shared directory of a server in the user's own network through Wi-Fi, but given the complexity in relation to, to the permissions of the networks it is not always applicable. Once we have seen the three Fluke Connect menu options, we can see the menu called IR Settings, that allows us to perform the three typical adjustments that influence the temperature calculation in a thermal imager, such as the emissivity, the reflected background temperature and the transmittance. By clicking on the emissivity option, you access a list of materials with different emissivities. We can scroll down by touching the screen and thus we can select the material with the appropriate emissivity. Once a material with a certain emissivity has been selected, press the upper arrow to return to the previous menu. Now we select the background option that allows with the left and right arrows to modify the reflected background temperature. Once adjusted, press the arrow at the top and return to the previous menu. Finally, we select the transmissibility option, which allows us to adjust the degree of transparency from 0 to 100, of the material through which we are observing with the infrared camera, for example, an infrared window for medium voltage electrical panels. This value is normally left at 100, since there are very few materials transparent to infrared radiation. For example, Window glass or the methacrylate that sometimes protects electrical panels are not transparent to infrared radiation. Adjusting these three parameters will allow the camera to recalculate the temperatures in order to offer the most suitable values possible depending on the material and the environment. Now we can return to the main settings menu and we will only have one menu to explain, that is the device settings option. We select this option and in this way we can see a list of the parameters that we can configure in the camera. First we have the selection of the format in which the thermographies will be saved, it can be in radiometric format, IS2, that is, with temperature data and with a visual image, or in JPEG format, that is, a standard image such as we can see it on the camera screen at the time of capturing the image. This format does not allow to display the temperatures of each pixel, so by default the IS2 format is recommended in order to perform temperature adjustments and analysis with SmartView or Fluke Connect software. Here, we can also select the resolution of the visible camera between two options, 320 by 240 pixels or 640 by 480 pixels. Once the appropriate selections are made, we go back. The next adjustment that we can make is to select the temperature scale, which can be Fahrenheit or Celsius. Then, comes the adjustment of the approximate distance at which we are from the object. 
This setting is used to correct the parallax error between the infrared camera and the visual camera, so that the two images match pixel by pixel. We can also adjust the unit that we are going to use for the distance, for example meters or feet. The following setting allows us to modify the prefix of the name that is given to the images. A prefix of up to four characters is supported, then the camera will add an increasing five-digit numbering to that prefix. Within the option change file name, we also have the option to reset this numerical counter that is used to name the thermographs. This will make the next saved image have a name with the chosen prefix plus the number 00001. Now we return to the device settings menu and the next option allows us to change the automatic shutdown timer for the display and for the camera itself. The minimum value in both cases will be 5 minutes. The next two settings allow us to change the date and time of the camera's internal clock. The next option is the one to enable or disable the Fluke logo on the camera screen. Then we can select the language used in the camera menus. After that, the option to select the decimal separator appears, which can be a point or a comma. The next option Restore Factory Default Values will allow, as its name indicates, to set the camera with the initial factory parameters. The Certificates option shows us information about the technical certificates in relation to the wireless communication of the product. Then we have the Licenses option that allows you to consult information about the open source software licenses used in the development of the product. The last option version allows you to check information about the product version, such as the serial number, the firmware version, etc. And so, we have reached the end of this presentation. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if this video has been interesting for you, don't forget to drop a like, so that I can know that you liked it, and I can program new videos on this topic. In a future video we will see how to use the thermal imager with the free Fluke Connect app on the mobile phone, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon.